Hello, everyone, and welcome to the June 17th edition of Olympus Inspection 360. My name is Curtis Dickinson. I'm a senior applications engineer with Olympus based here in Houston, Texas. And today we'll be uh, having a discussion on increasing the productivity of your TFM inspections. Uh, before we get started, just a couple announcements. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with the uh, Crowdcast format, on your right-hand side, you're going to see a, a chat box. Uh, if you have any questions throughout this presentation, we ask that you put those questions into the chat box. And then at the end of the presentation, we'll come back through and answer all of those questions directly. Uh, the second is that we have a sponsored giveaway uh, during this presentation. About midway through, we have a video that'll play. And in the middle of that, we'll post a question in the chat. Uh, the first person to answer back in the chat with the correct answer uh, will receive that giveaway uh, for which we'll contact you uh, following the presentation. Uh, part of this presentation is going to be uh, me speaking to you about a couple different things and then uh, the bulk of it will be a pre-recorded session. Uh, so we'll start things off first by just giving you a little bit of background on what exactly it is that we're talking about here. So for those of you uh, that are familiar with FMC TFM inspections, you'll kind of understand uh, exactly what it is we're getting at here. But if you're not, if you're unfamiliar, um, our portable phase ray system, the OmniScan X3, is capable of performing UT, TOFT, phase array, and FMC TFM inspections. And one of the uh, primary issues or downsides to running FMC TFM inspections can be the slow scan speeds that go with it. Uh, we collect a large amount of data in this process, both by um, the sending and receiving of the signals from the phase ray transducer, and then processing that data into the TFM image that you get live onto the unit. There are a couple different things that you can do within the setup of a TFM inspection to kind of uh, optimize your inspection speed, such as reducing the zone or reducing the area of your inspection, um, using less modes as, as part of your setup, or using a lower element count transducer. The problem with doing that is it's not going to be the most efficient way to conduct your inspection. So using a smaller element or covering less area means you're probably going to have to uh, conduct more scans as part of your inspection. So one of the recent additions we've made to the software on the X3 is the addition of what we call a sparse firing mode for TFM. Um, what we'll do is we have a brief video that'll play uh, that will discuss exactly what is the sparse firing mode for TFM, how does it work? And then in the second part of the video, what we'll do is show you an example of how this is implemented for an actual inspection and show some live data collection uh, with it in use and without just to show you the differences. And again, once we get to the end of the presentation, if you have any questions, just type those, in, type those into the chat and we'll address those straight away. Uh, so without further ado, we'll get started again with that brief explanation on what exactly the sparse mode is. So let's begin with a brief explanation on how the sparse firing mode works on the OmniScan X3. In a typical TFM inspection, we utilize FMC or full matrix capture as the means of pulsing and receiving signals from a phase array transducer. And one of the questions that we often get with the sparse mode is, is this a form of HMC or half matrix capture? And the answer to that is no. So in a typical FMC process, we fire one element of the transducer and we receive with everything. In a half matrix capture mode, you begin by pulsing one element of the phase ray probe and then receiving with all elements of that transducer. So on the left hand side here, we have our half matrix capture setup uh, with a transducer that has five elements in the transducer. And we'll go ahead and pulse number one and receive with elements one, two, three, four, five all from the phase rate transducer. And let's highlight those green to simulate that we've received on those elements. In a half matrix process, each time you pulse the element next within the sequence, you reduce the reception element that's already been pulsed. And what that does is it reduces the amount of sound waves that are being received, thus reducing the amount of data that's being fed to um, your acquisition software or to the instrument. 
So what this ends up looking like is as we pulse each element, we drop off a receiving element. Thus, you get half of the data set. And this process works fairly well when you are attempting to send the raw data to another device. But in a instrument like the X3, where we are summating all of the data through the hardware of the unit, uh, a better way to improve upon the inspection speeds is to, instead of reducing the amount of received elements, uh, is to actually reduce the amount of pulse elements. So in the sparse firing technique, what we do is we can program the instrument to reduce that number and fire, say, every other element or every other two elements or at certain intervals to speed up the process. So in the sparse mode on our right hand side, we might reduce that by a factor of two. So let's say, for example, we start with element number one and that pulses and we'll highlight these cells to simulate that we've received on that pulse. In the next sequence, normally we would fire element number two, but in this case, in sparse mode, we choose to skip the pulsing of element two and go straight to element number three. So then we pulse with element number three, listen with all of the other elements of the transducer, and there we have our next data set. And then we repeat that process until we reach the end of the transducer. So by firing less elements of the transducer, that also creates less data for the instrument to have to manage, and that should give you a boost in the inspection speed. So in the next part here, what we'll do is we'll set up our OmniScan X3 and take you through the process of setting up the sparse mode and adjusting it for an actual live inspection. Now that we've gone through a brief explanation on how the sparse mode works on the OmniScan X3, let's go through the practical application of it utilizing an actual inspection. Uh, what we have before us here is a one inch thick double V weld, and you can see the setup for that here uh, directly on the OmniScan X3 screen. So we've programmed in the joint configuration wall thickness, and we've also programmed in our five megahertz 64 element transducer. Uh, this transducer is currently running two separate TFM groups, a 4T group to cover more of the upper half of this component and a 2T group to cover more of the lower half of this component. So we'll go ahead and compile this together and run through an encoded inspection to see what no sparse running a full FMC data collection set looks like. So on the left hand side of the screen here we have the 2T display running on the top. On the bottom we have the 4T display uh, running here. So you can see both sets of data being collected at the same time and we'll go ahead and run this inspection. I've got a mini wheel encoder attached to the 5L64 transducer to act as our recording device for the data. So we'll position the transducer onto our part in accordance with our scan plan, plus the play button to initiate the acquisition, and we'll start collecting data. Now what you can see as I begin rolling the transducer here is that we get a output of the scan speed at the top of the screen. You can see here this green icon here uh, spells out for us what our acquisition rate is currently, which is at this point 11 millimeters per second. And what that means is my max speed right now as I pull the transducer down the component is 11 in millimeters per second or roughly about a half inch per second. And that makes it a little bit difficult to pull the transducer without missing lines of data. As I pull here, if I move too quickly, you can see that, re that green light flashes red, indicating that I've missed data uh, during this data collection. And you'll also notice on the two uh, top views on the left-hand side of the screen, there uh, starts to appear uh, black lines of missing data. So I've got two issues here with this particular setup in running the full FMC data collection. And that is my slow scan speed. So you can see here just how slow it takes me to run the acquisition. And then the propensity to miss data lines. So what we'll do now is activate the sparse setting and just kind of compare and contrast what that looks like. In our TFM settings, 
under our pulsar configuration is where we find our sparse mode. Obviously right now it's running full matrix, but we do have the flexibility to apply different levels of sparse firing. Uh, 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 1 by 4, 8, and 16. And again, going back to what we talked about earlier, this will skip whatever number of elements that you see in the selection here. So if we have this set to say 1 by 3, this means it'll skip two elements and fire every third element of the transducer. And ideally what this is going to do is give us an increase in the acquisition rate for the system. You can see there as soon as it finishes adjusting that to the 1 by 3 sparse, uh, we get a significant increase in our acquisition rate. So now rather than collecting at 11 millimeters per second, we are now collecting at 31 millimeters per second, which is a significant jump. So we'll add a little bit more couplant here just to make sure we're coupled well. I'll go ahead and reset my acquisition here on the unit. Realign my transducer and just kind of get a visual comparison on uh, what kind of increase we see in the scan rate. So you can see now if we keep our eye on the green button up at the top, obviously we still may miss data lines, but not as frequently as we did before. And this gives us the ability to collect our data at a much faster rate. And this is collecting data using a 64 element transducer and running two full groups of TFM inspection. So that works quite well there. We can pause the acquisition and go through the process of analyzing our data on the unit. But just that little bump in acquisition rate uh, equals to a large increase in the productivity of your inspections. If you can collect the data faster, then that's the faster that you can get into analysis and then conduct your reporting out to your customers. All right, appreciate uh, everybody's attention to, uh, to the video there. Uh, again, the, uh, the sparse mode is, is an excellent tool uh, to use anytime that you run a, a high element count uh, FMC TFM inspection. The more elements that you use uh, during your TFM inspection, the slower that the acquisition rate is gonna roll. So sparse mode is an excellent tool just to have on board uh, to use anytime you wanna kind of maximize your scan rate while you're conducting your inspections. The only real downside to running the sparse mode is a little bit of, uh, of extra noise. Because we're reducing the number of elements that are pulsed at the inspection, that typically means we tend to amplify a little bit more of the baseline noise uh, that comes with your inspection. But really all you need to do there is just select the proper sparse setting that sh will allow you to collect at the rate you want and minimize the amount of noise that comes in. So uh, if any of you have any questions, again, feel free to drop those over in the chat. We'll give a little bit of time to uh, let those roll in um, and address those right away. Uh, if not, and you don't have any questions and you're good with what you saw here, again, appreciate everybody's time uh, coming in to check out what we have on this edition of Olympus Inspection 360. Curtis, I think we have a question in the chat. Um, oh, did I miss it? Yes. Uh, it's, uh, oh, yes. I'm mode, sorry. Will the sparse <laughs> mode work on all X3 units? I was staring right at it. Yeah, the question is, will the sparse mode work on all X3 units? Um, yes, we have currently three different models of the OmniScan X3. We have a 16-64, we have a 16-128, and then we have a 32-128. Um, all three units uh, will can take advantage of the sparse mode so long as you're using um, our latest software, which is available for free on the website. So uh, that is on any version 5.5 or higher. And yeah, that works on on all X3 units. Oh, I see we got a we got a correct answer to the um, and to the giveaway question. So congrats to uh, David Tommen. Hopefully, I pronounced that right. No, another another question rolling in. Uh, do I need to purchase a software upgrade for sparse mode? Um, no, the. The sparse mode was included on our MXU 5.5 update for the OmniScan X3. Uh, our software updates are available directly from our website, olympus-ims.com, uh, in the support section. If you travel there, all of our software updates for the X3, um, the 5.5 that included the sparse mode, uh, our upcoming 5.6 update, and any future updates for the X3 are all free and readily available readily available there. So feel free to travel there anytime, download the updates and install them directly to your unit. Or if you have 
uh, the Wi-Fi adapter for your X3, you can download those, those directly as well. All right. Well, good. If there's no other no other questions, again, just want to thank everybody for coming in to the Olympus Inspection 360. Everyone take care. Have a great day. And we'll see you in the next uh, edition next week. Thank you.